Father, right now I thank you for, once again, the opportunity to stand in the place of sacredness and administer your word. And I pray, God, that it brings healing. Father, let the words of my mouth reflect the meditations of my heart that I have with you. God, help me to have brevity of speech and help me to be on point and not be concerned about anyone's opinion but yours. For I'm only ministering to an audience of one. And the only voice I want to hear is, well done, my good son. I thank you in advance that you will help me tap into a place that I haven't been in a while, but I can help bring it to life so that somebody else can begin their own grind towards a peaceful mind. God, I thank you for your word, and I thank you for your revelation. Father, bless Jill as she comes behind me or beside me to follow up what it is that I am saying. Once again, God, I thank you for this season. All those in agreement say amen. amen. Last week, thank you. Last week, as I woke up to meditate, I heard wisdom say, and wisdom is my mentor. Wisdom is your mentor. I heard wisdom say, anger is, first I heard wisdom say, Duran, every time something good happens, you get anxious. Every time something good happens, you tend to want to feel anxious. So anxiety ain't just in bad things. It can be in good things. Then he said, anxiety, he said, your anger is overrated. Then he later came back and said, the ways you choose to express your anger is overrated. I accepted it because I knew it was his voice, but I said, well, how can anger be overrated? You've had me teach it for years. He said, I didn't say anger was overrated. I'm saying the methods you choose to express your anger are overrated. And then maybe two days later, he said, I said, well, what is overrated? And he says, well, it's about the basketball players. God bless Kwame Brown, but Kwame Brown was overrated in the NBA. Kwame Brown came out, I don't know if it was number one or very high up there, and played for the Wizards, and he didn't produce. God bless him, he was, he was, he was overrated. And then there, and overrated is like people say, oh, that's, you know, and, and a guy said, he showed me, he says, Deron, overrated is when people bring, they believe in the hype, but they haven't seen the production of effort. And he says, it's overrated for you because... You believed in it, that it worked, but that doesn't work. And the only reason I was able to find that is because I have to live my life in increments of 12 months, 12 weeks, 14 weeks, 8 weeks, and whatever you name it. And at the end of each one of those periods, because I have to get a, a scan or something of that, I have to go back and reflect, how did I live my life these last 8 weeks? How did I live my life these last 10 weeks? How did I live my life? And did I give my best effort towards living? Amen. And the first few times, every time I did this, I could see the energy, the energy that I had involved myself with and saying, Deron, that was not necessary to be involved with. See, as you get older, or if you go through a trial, you begin to understand what really matters and what doesn't matter. Amen. And so with that, I realized that I had a system of so thrival. See, because I learned that if you were going to be fully engaged in life, you needed to thrive, not strive. Because striving was about you trying to reach a goal. Thriving was about an inner goal being reached inside of you because as you grow, you are also thriving with wisdom. Because wisdom is your mentor. See, the day you understand I hear voices and you also hear the voice of wisdom, you've just never taken the time to distinguish it. That's why we don't get our directions. So he said, this is your system of survival. 
And it, he said, this is your philosophy of life. When he said philosophy, he said, this is how you've been able to maintain thus far being on the front line for 25, 30 odd years, taking as many shots, accusations, or whatever you can to see to it that people had salvation. And every brother and sister who is following up under the system that you and Jill have followed, not our own coin system, we're talking about the system of God. The universe of God. And as you all have done that, he says, you all have put together a blueprint on how to live a successful, delivered life. Amen. Survive. Read that with me, my friend. Supervivor. Keep going. Live beyond equals possibility mindset. Live longer than from super over beyond. Let's stop right there. When I, when I, when I, I learned in college, my first year in college, the best class I ever took was uh, Latin. And understanding the etymology of words. And I didn't know because all I knew was English. And then when I understood words had root words and words had origins, I had no idea I'd be a pastor, and with that etymology of words, you get to find out what it actually means. And so survive means to live longer or super over or super viver. That's where supervive or survivor comes from. But now, vive means life. What does vive mean? Life. And so when you survive, your life lives beyond where others tend to drop off. Depression. Last year, as I was taking all kinds of different medications and going through titration, and that is the ability to find out what works, what doesn't work, what dosage you're supposed to take, what you're not supposed to take, what raises your blood pressure, what makes you sleep, what makes you depressed, what makes you anxious, what makes you break out, what makes you start to shake. I had to go through titration. And as I went through titration, one of the things that never helped was depression. They wanted to put me on Zoloft. They wanted to put me on, you name it. I didn't even know all these things existed, but because I was a reader, because my father had taught me how to read and study it for yourself. See, because the rule in my house, if there was a word, and said, say, Daddy, what's that word mean? He said, go look it up. Mommy, what's that word? Would she say, look it up? Because if you don't train yourself how to live in this earth, then you go around in ignorance and just be ignorant of, of words. That's why if I'm doing an interview with somebody and they say a word, I say, what does that mean? Because there's no shame in being wrong or ignorant of information. And so depression kept coming over me and I said, God, you're going to have to help me fight this because I'm not going on that serious antidepressant. And listen, I'm not against antidepressants, Amen. Because you know what one of my, two of my doctors said, Deron, your serotonin levels have been depleted through the chemicals that you have taken. And you have to rebuild it. When I went to my therapist, my therapist says, you've been through the equivalent of four to five divorces with all these breaks in the church and all these different things. And each time your soul has been ripped from you. Say stress. 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 I said, God, I'm going to overcome this depression. Why? Because I was on some kind of blood pressure medicine before a couple of years back, and that stuff made me so messed up that I would have to drink a Red Bull to exercise, and that's how I ended up having my dag on aneurysm. Because I'd have to take the medicine to lower it and then drink the Red Bull to have the energy. So I'm putting my body in two different extremes. I said, I'm going to overcome this depression. Just as I overcame the food fight. I don't have to take appetite suppressants. Why? Because I overcame that hole that was in my soul. Read that with me. If you say you're depressed, I suggest you always do your best. Bring it down. See, our biggest problem, I learned this, is that we don't do our best, but then we want to complain. 
we don't ever put forth our best efforts, or we put forth our best, best efforts for what does not matter. So if you say you're depressed, I suggest you always do your best. See, some of y'all just learn to live with it. And being down and out and blue is a part of you. That ain't who you are. When he said, I breathe the breath of life in you. I breathe vitality in you. When he says you are fearfully and wonderfully made, that means you have to begin to line up in faith and say, now God, allow these synapses within my mind and my spirit to line up so I can function cognitively because through your Holy Ghost, you have brought me this far from the mess I've been in and I ain't going to stop trusting you now. Bring it back up. You must see the cause of your suffering. You must accept where you are. You must always do your best. That means to embrace yourself with compassion. Stop. I came to the conclusion years ago, who needs Satan and they got Deron Cloud? Hello? Deron, you don't need Satan because you beat yourself up so bad. He ain't got no work to do. <gasps> Satan is your corner man. He's the one that's helping you fight this fight. For those who don't know the corner man, when you're out there fighting, you go back in your corner, and your corner says, come on, you can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Satan's like, you can't do this, you can't do this. Don't go out there, he's going to knock you out. Just survive, survive, survive. Let us do the next round so we can get the paycheck. Bring it up. Accept where you are. Embrace yourself with compassion to let go and end the suffering. To do what? Yeah. Let go and what? Yeah. You know why you're suffering? Because you won't let it go. Amen. Can I say that again? Yeah. You know why you're going through? Because you won't let it go. Amen. The fact that you can't mention their name. The fact you can't hear their name. The fact that you don't want to hear their name. The fact that you don't want to remember what had happened. The fact you can't talk about it. The fact when somebody bring it up, you go off. You don't want to end the suffering because suffering becomes comforting. Hello? Amen. Suffering becomes comforting because suffering is a way to escape the reality and find a way to blame somebody else for your situation. Let go and end the suffering when Right Amen. now, not later, when you're feeling better. That's why we've been heard it for so many years. When I get myself together, I'm going back to church. When I get myself together. And now today, kids don't even talk like that because when you say sold, you ain't even sold out. They're thinking about concerts. <laughs> no, they literally don't know what to be sold out means, this generation. They don't understand. They sold out to the Twitterverse. Most of your kids are having mental disturbances because of being raised on this artificial intelligence and you were not strong enough to fight the battle of the invasion that was coming into your house. Alexa, Alexa, Siri, Siri. And then when they put reports out, we taking all data and using everything and everything your kids are saying. And we're using it and people are listening and doing all the things, following your sexual conversations, your in the windows and everything. And then coming up with products to be able to serve because you want comfort. We want comfort and not effort. Right. 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 Come on, wrote, come on, remote control soul. Remote control souls don't work. Amen. If you're going to get past this, these are my cards. Listen, if you look at my life, you'll see what I see. See, God has been speaking. I didn't realize all my life he's been speaking to me through music. 
I didn't know that. And so yesterday I'm thinking about David Free, I'm thinking about this message, then I start hearing, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I went upstairs and Jill, I said, and she said, I know what it is. And I said, Do you know who's singing? She said, I'm not sure. I said, okay. And then when I was standing here on the leadership thing, I said, Have y'all ever heard the song? If you look in my eyes, you see what I see? And they said, It's Mary Jane Blind. It says, if you look in your life, I said, okay, whatever it is. Thank you. And then I went home and read the lyrics. And when, no, no, I didn't go home. Uh, Cabby sent me a reminder. And so I said, oh, thank you. I forgot I got to look that song up. And when I looked at the lyrics, I started crying. (laughs) You know why you're not prospering? Because you ain't listening to the unctionings of the spirit. And you hearing it and you getting high off of it. As opposed to walking in it. Most of y'all get high off the revelation. But not the execution of the revelation. If you look in my life, you'll see what I've seen. Read it with me. If you look in my life, you'll see what I've seen. And see what I've seen. Go back again. Keep reading. Go that. Life can only be what you make it. When you're feeling down, you should not fake it. Say what's on your mind and you'll find the time. Stop. She said when you're feeling down, you should never what? Fake it. When you're feeling down, you should never what? Fake it. Children are meant to be seen, not what? Heard. And so we learn through all these rules never to feel our feelings or think our thoughts. And the reason we have been blessed by Mary J. Bynes, the queen of soul and the queen of hip hop or whatever you want to call it, is because she was traumatized. And she found a way to be able to release her demons and all this pressure. And then she used what was meant to destroy her to build her. That's why she had no more drama. Keep reading, please. Life can only be making it. When you're feeling down, you should never fail. Keep going. Say what's on your mind, and you'll find in time that all the negative energy, it will all cease. Stop, stop, stop. All the negative energy, it will all what? Cease. Bring them lights down for me for a second. Come here, Kurt. Say frequency. Now, I'm not promoting Q-Link at all, but I am promoting Q-Link because it's been around since 1970s. And what they learned is that electromagnetic frequencies cause your body and your mind to feel fatigue. And so that's why I got a wallet that has electromagnetic blocking mesh on it because they can go into your credit card and get your credit card number because that little... Uh, chip is sending out a radio frequency. If you've ever been going down the street and you're trying to open your phone and you're picking up everybody else's internet in their house, you just don't know their code. And sometimes you can jack it because they ain't got their code and you pick their stuff up and do it. But nobody's stopping to pay attention that these high frequencies that are built into the towers of our schools over our children's schools, camouflaged as trees, are bringing radiation and energy. And what I do is I allow that energy through this electromagnetic frequency magnet to be absorbed through that. And then what it does, athletes and all kinds of people use it because it strengthens your cognitive function. It gives you energy. It also takes away your fatigue. And it's not psychosomatic or placebo effect. But what it helps you do is to focus. Say frequency. Frequency. I got a show coming out called Stig Leaf Mata. Shake that up. Turn the lights down. Please turn the lights down.
Y'all see that? Hit it and hand it to me. There you go. Hand it to me. Now listen, keep your hand on me. You got to understand when you're dealing with people, you're dealing with energy. And if you go in and you ain't prayed up, meditated, or in the spirit. Come on, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it. Now I'm going to hit you in your face, you hit me harder again. <laughs> no, okay, hold this, hold this. When they come with your energy, you got to override their energy with love. Your energy has to be a higher frequency than that dark blue energy. And you've got to become active and become discerning. Because you must understand everybody don't even understand they're on assignment to take you off of yours. Thank you, my friend. If you're going to get past it, number one, you're going to have to pick up this lesson and or this book in terms of what I'm doing and study it. When I say and or a book, I'm saying you got to get to a point you want out, but you ain't putting forth the effort to get out. There are a lot of people say, I, want, I can't live like this no more. But you ain't doing nothing not to live like this no more. The whole goal was never let them read because if they read, they would become educated and then they would get free. Amen. And so, number two, you got to accept the pain and be as kind to yourself as what? Possible. Stop rejecting the pain. Accept the pain because I keep telling you the pain has a message in it. And then after you accept it, number three, appreciate yourself for having the willing to do number one and number two. You know what I had to do? I'll never forget when I was making a turn out of my driveway probably about five years ago when I had to determine that I was going to have to walk away from certain people in my family and certain people in my life. And I said, Deron, it's okay to take care of you. That's it. That's it, Did y'all hear me? Amen. I said, it's okay to take care of you. Which meant that I wasn't going to be able to let people talk into my ear because I needed to hear. And sometimes you can't be concerned about I had to tell somebody recently, ain't no problem. I just don't talk on the phone like that no more. I talk about what matters. And when I say appreciate yourself, if you don't praise yourself, then who's going to do it? If you don't praise yourself, who's going to do it? You've got to be a reward yourself. Come on, D, go. The state of depression is not my problem. The process of depression is the problem. Say that with me. The state of depression is not my problem. The process of depression is the problem. See, I want you to understand depression is a feeling. Depression can be that dark cloud that comes over you. Depression can be that thing that makes you not want to get out of the bed. Depression is that thing that says, I quit. Have you ever had energy and then all of a sudden you have a conversation and you say, I don't want to do it no more? You got to overcome that. You got to overcome that. My problem is not the state of depression. My problem is not processing. If you are depressed, you must constantly ask yourself, what am I depressing? If you are depressed, you must constantly ask yourself, what? What am I depressing? You need to know what you're putting down. You need to know what you're suppressing. That's why she said, if you look at my life. See, you're going to have to stop telling that romantic story. I had a good childhood. Shut up. See, we do that because we don't want to. Go against the people who raised us. But everybody who raised us, they had problems too. Because you begin to realize, oh my God, I'm acting just like my father. How did I do that? Because you model what you saw. Come on, baby. Every time the depressing, every time depressing feelings come, I tend to, that content feelings I, that tend to overtake me, I don't blame the person, the situation. I don't take a pill. I don't consider suicide, so what do you do? Bring that down. I had to make a decision that the Holy Spirit is going to have to help me overcome this. I said, I, I said, y'all trying to put me on all this stuff, and I know what it does. And they said, but your serotonin level. I said, I got it, but I got to be able to access God's spirit. 
and give him an opportunity. That meant I had to start being present even when my memory and my mind didn't want to be present. It's a choice. Amen. Say love is a decision. Love is a decision. I ain't telling you anything wrong with antidepressants, but I'm telling you, I got to put forth the effort. Each time you are depressed, stop and turn your attention inward towards your heart and what? Soul. Do what? Turn your attention towards your what? Heart and soul. Don't get caught up in blaming people and situations. What's going on inside of me? What am I thinking now? I was just on a good page. What just happened? Read that with me. Go ahead, read that. Pay attention. Pay attention to all of what you're feeling. Write it down. No analyzing it. Just allow it to come out like a volcano. Spew it out. Express it in whatever wholesome way that does not bring about chaos and strife. Stop right there. Bring it down. Listen to what I'm saying. Sometimes you got to speak it. And it ain't going to come out pretty. Get used to hearing what you feel. Because it's going to sound ugly. I didn't want to say I'm, I didn't want to say I'm terrified. Because I thought that would be weak. But I had to say, baby, I'm terrified. And I don't care how much faith you have. You're human. Amen. I just got to learn how to overcome this feeling. Amen. Or transcend it. Avoid self-manufactured high, the self-manufactured high of your defense mechanisms. See, many of us don't understand we got defense mechanisms, and our defense mechanisms are ways to self-manufacture a psychic and or spiritual high to help, help us overcome and distract us from what we're feeling. It's called religion. That's why religion is useless. Because it's a lot of talk, but there's no effort. And so now, you may not be smoking weed like these kids, but you are smoking weed. Bring that down. That's deep. Because God said, Deron, everybody high off themselves. Everybody is so focused on themselves, so consumed with looking good on your Instagram, so consumed with taking selfies. Don't nobody give that much of a care about you. People don't want to see you eating Tabasco sauce, doing all this stuff all, every moment of your life. You better understand, you ain't updating people. Your attention star. I didn't say it. Your pastor did. <laughs> but we smoke in we. And what is that? That is obsessing over making yourself feel better by making others feel bad with the best intentions, best of intentions. Because we don't take a look at how we get high and getting back, fussing at people, yelling at people, criticizing, judging, talking about them, gossiping. See, I told you, predicting and doing all these different things. We have no idea. All I meant was, well, I wasn't even trying to say that because you wouldn't take the time to think about what you was doing because you ain't never took the time to look at your life and see what triggers me, meaning you. She said, if you look into my life, you'll see what I see. One day at a time, the ultimate goal is to capture your patterns so you can break the distractive and destructive cycles that you enter into to protect your soul. Are y'all hearing this? If I'm not establishing anything, I'm going to establish that a lot of the problems that you're having is because of the way you act out. And you give in to distractive and destructive ways to help you deny what you're really going through. Amen. And so let's go here. 
one day at a time, one brick at a time. The ultimate goal is to capture your patterns, not just break the habit. You can't break what you can't see. You can't put to death what you ain't seen that's alive. Okay, here we go. Let's read that next scripture. Go ahead, please. But prove yourselves doers of the word, actively and continually obeying God's precepts, and not merely listeners, who hear the word but fail to internalize its meaning, deluding yourselves by unsound reasoning contrary to the truth. For if anyone only listens to the word without obeying it, he is like a man who looks very carefully at his natural face in a mirror, for once he has looked at himself and gone away, he immediately forgets what he looked like. But he who looks carefully into the perfect law, the law of liberty and faith abides by it, not having become a careless listener who forgets, but an active doer who obeys. Let's start right there. That was one of the first scriptures I learned when I gave my life over to God. And He said, you got to be doers of the word. You can't look at yourself and forget what I just showed you. The reason mostly our kids don't serve God or the reason they chose to walk away from church is because of our behavior. You have to make sure that, that that's why I've heard for years when parents get upset, why can't you act like Deron? Why, Dad, why don't you do this? Or why, Deron and Jill, or why don't you act like Ed or Real or Joe or whatever the case may be. And the parents get upset, like that. they ain't running this house, they ain't paying no rent up in here. <laughs> But what they're saying is their young heart has not been corrupted by life and so forth. They hear this information, they think that it's real, and they're looking at you to see if you will have the same kind of consequences, good positive consequences in your life so that they can follow God. But we forget what we look like. I want to tell a story. Don't bring that up. A quick story. And then I got three videos to play. Just make it quick. Uh, I came up here and I was going to put something up here. I was going to put something in my presentation, but I got up here and this daggone thing was on my <laughs> desk. And I just busted out laughing. I said, he beat me to it. I said, but I'm glad I went ahead and obeyed the spirit and put it in my lesson. See, because I had no idea last week as I pulled into the driveway with my friend who was giving me a ride home because I didn't trust the Uber guy because he didn't have an Uber sign in his car. <laughs> and I said, where's your sign? I don't know. <laughs> I said, you don't know. <laughs> I said, hey, Will, come over here and take a picture of him. If I kill him, they will know I did it. <laughs> he knew I was serious. Will came around, but I forget Will is a former police officer, so he come around the window like he a dag on sheriff. Can I see your driver's license, please? And he buff, just came out the gym, and the guy's like, oh, what do you want to do want my driver's license? He says, I want it. I said, because you don't have an Uber thing. What's this going on? I don't. And Will says, can I see your driver's license, please? And I said, oh, my God, I forgot that this Negro was a police officer. He's scaring the heck out of this African brother. But then I said, I don't know, man, if that's your phone or somebody else's phone. I said, come on, I'm getting out. I said, come on, Will. You got to give me a ride home. He said, I got you. I said, cool, let's roll. And then the Holy Ghost where it rolled out the red carpet for this pastor to have a spirit of peace. Ava, shalom, love and peace. Because as we pulled into the driveway, my friend who had rebuked me on my garage, it needed to be clean, and with the most serious voice, he said, you cannot mix DC Comics with Marvel Comics. <laughs> but it was in such a serious voice, I said, is this Negro for real? <laughs> and then he made another statement. You can't put Superman with the Avengers. I'm getting confused because I'm trying to figure. I say, you wasn't even in service on Sunday. So what are you talking about? 
So I commenced to telling him a story of how I was at a friend's house on the deck and his son came out and started wiping the TV off when we were outside on the deck, but there was nothing on the TV. And I'm sitting there, and I'm not telling you that it was Joe started, but I'm sitting there <laughs> and I'm looking, trying to figure out why is this dude doing this? Oh, and I said, can you tell me what's on the TV, Joe Ma? He said, uh, it was some stuff on the top. I said, on the top? So there's nothing in the screen or nothing. And then... Joe said, yeah, I figured you spilled some milk or something on top of that or whatever. And I looked at him, and I looked at his son, and I said, he has a problem. <laughs> and his son looked back at me and said, yes, he does. <laughs> and he smiled. See, Joe is neat. A neat freak. <laughs> but here's how God re blesses you. Because I was telling the story to the Marvel fan. And I said, brother, he was cleaning something and he had no problem. He, he saw it. And then he told me, hey, listen, man, I got to keep stuff in order. And I said, uh, that's where you at, man. With this DC and Marvel stuff. So I'm thinking I didn't took him out. You can say whatever you want to say. You do not mix DC and Marvel Comics. I was getting engaged into a conversation. I said, I'm not going to give my wisdom to these dim wits. <laughs> That's one of my cards. Don't give your wisdom to somebody with dim wits. I just said, you know what? Let me get out the car. I'm not going to give an argument. But when I walked away, I turned around and said, I'm telling your wife. <laughs> that you got a problem. And he said, too late. <laughs> I've already filled her mind with nonsense of things that don't matter. And she's a fan. She's the one that texted me during sir. I said, I actually did like this. <laughs> and I laughed on that ground, got bit my mosquitoes, ants, and everything but it was worth every bite because I then understood why my life has been protected. So when I was writing a lesson this morning, I said, I can't be calling them OCD. I know who they are. They're organized. And I started two years ago asking them, how do you keep your life organized? Because God told me, order simplifies your life. And he said, I don't want you to read a book. I just want you to practice organization in the, or, in the organization and in your life and in everything. So this morning I wrote, all my friends are O-O-C-D-D. <laughs> I had to make that up because I said, all my friends are O-C-D except Ed. <laughs> Ed makes up for his O-C-D with passion. <laughs> So we laughing, but this morning, obedient, organized, controlled by the spirit, delivered, walking in it, determined, controlled by obedience to their creator. Because as I've discipled hundreds of men, I look for signs and I look for who can handle the roaring of the lion. Play my tape. Things look clear. Things look cool. But what you don't see is the enemy is seeking whom he may devour. And he's waiting. You have yet to be able to see it. But if you look real careful, He's right there. Stop right there. That's what happens with most of y'all. Most of us, because we ain't paying attention. When that thing comes out, it gets you. And it caught, catches you unsuspected especially if you're not obedient to your creator. 
My friends are sheep, not goats. When trials come their way. The earliest known domesticated farm animal, today there are more than 400 million of them worldwide. Then there's this little guy. He doesn't get the attention of, say, the more fashionable Angora goat. He's a fainting goat, and he's got a different talent. Lisa Johnson breeds goats in Florida. These goats are called myotonic goats. Many people call them fainting goats, wooden leg goats, stiff leg goats, nervous goats, the Tennessee goats, uh, Tennessee meat goats. So they just have all kinds of nicknames for them. They carry the hereditary gene for myotonia congenita. What happens is that when the goat is startled or excited, it causes a very temporary stiffening of the muscles. And when the muscles relax, after a few seconds, the goat jumps up and runs on its way. They don't call them feigning goats for nothing. It can even be something as simple as being excited over being fed. The adult animals um, typically, um, they keep their balance better, and what they will end up doing is uh, pretty much bracing on four legs. While it might seem easy to make fun of the fainting goat, there are scores of breeders who love them just the way they are. I don't know if you're a stiff-legged goat, a straight-legged goat, a stupid goat, or whatever. She called you that, not me. But I want you to see our attitudes. We freeze when we trigger. And you got to look at that and say, I've got a situation, but it's also a solution. Sometimes your mind plays tricks on you and you feel like you're going down. The journey to find my mind's grind is the journey to becoming my own hero, Shiro, with the assistance of he. Heroism is not about finding a new truth, always learning, but never able to acknowledge the truth, but having the courage to pursue the vision and go after your goal. Behold, I do a what? New thing. See, I'm doing a what? New thing. Now it does what? Springs up. Do you not perceive it? My wife told me it was about possibility. If this is my call, Duran, if you bring forth that which is within you, then that which is within you will be your salvation. If you bring forth the authenticity that you lost during your traumatization and everything you went through in life, that will be your salvation. If you do not bring forth that which is in you, the original you before it was scarred, then that which was in you will destroy you. Duran, you must learn to harness and transform his or her, but his primordial intelligent energies. That's why I was telling you about that whole thing with the energy thing. Because I'll never forget. I, I had... And, 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 I'll never forget, I had my uncle working for me and my father, I told my uncle something, my uncle, God bless him, he do what brothers do, decided to be a troublemaker and said, hey, Eric, I ain't know y'all live from feast to famine. How do I know this? Because I got a call from Eric Clown and Eric Clown called me up and said, hey, man, how come you telling people we live from feast to famine? I want to say, Negro, because we did. But I said, nope. And I just kept listening. He was so upset and he was bothered because I didn't realize he had an image that he was maintaining. And then we kept going. He said, Jill said, Deron, you can hang the phone up. I said, because I learned to be respectful to chaos. Then I've also learned to obey chaos and stay mired in the mess as opposed to allowing my feet to do the walking. But guess what? That happened. And I began to understand that this is all about energies and frequencies. And if you don't understand your energy, then you will commingle it with someone else's energy. And you can end out of your own divine order, as Jill said a week or two ago, because you're in somebody's disorder. Okay. So last a week or so ago, I had a great experience. 
And I heard, call your dad up and tell him. Now, we've already settled our differences and everything. And I said, Dad, you're brilliant, man. Despite everything that we've been through, you did a good job in raising this son. I said, yeah, I said some things because I was young and it was just coming out. I'm 24, 25, 26, and I had not looked at myself. I said, but I want you to know I just did some stuff up in Manhattan with some very intellectual people, and I was not ashamed at all. I was able to hang because of the instruction that you gave me. I followed my elder, my father's instruction, and not my friend's. Jill gave me a scripture, and it's in 2 Kings, I believe it's 12, 1 Kings. She gave me a scripture about Jer- Jeroboam, and what she said was that he was told by the elders what to do, and then he decided to listen to his peers, the young guys. And they told him to say, my little finger is bigger than all y'all loins. And when he said that, he was trying to let them know, I'm bigger than you. And I can handle this. And then God said, and that was because I needed to carry out a purpose in, with his disobedience. God said, it was my pleasure to destroy what you built, Deron, because when you build a Christian community based upon your ideal, I built this church based on the opposite of what I experienced at Great Commission and other churches. I didn't build it completely on Christ. I said, I'm going to build this in such a way where we'll value relationship, but then relationship became God, not relationship with God. And then God says, you basically created your own religion called real. He says, and so now when you create that community, you then try to make people live by the rules that you put in so you can safeguard the community. And God said, I want to destroy it and rebuild it. So we went through the wilderness and we're in the rebuilding stage. And many of us got hurt and beat down in the wilderness because we weren't willing to confront what we were going through. I got you on this microphone because... What's the name of your show? Oh, the Unpopular Podcast. Speak up, brother. What the, is it? The Unpopular Podcast. The Unpopular. He, he has a thing called the Unpopular Podcast. And uh, Jalen, he does a sports casting thing. And I saw it. And I said, well, great. I ain't got to study. I just got to bring him on stage <laughs> and ask him what this is about. And then we'll go from here. Matt, I'm not going to play that Magic Johnson video, but where did he quit at? And what, what, where, where was he at when he told everybody he quit? Uh, he did a press conference before, the ga- before a game. He didn't mm-hmm. tell anybody. But he didn't tell anybody? No, nah, he just did a press conference, and that's mm-hmm. when everyone found out. And what did he say in the press conference? He just said, uh, everyone's telling me, you know, can't wait for next year because the season was almost over. But he was, in the back of his mind, like, I'm not going to be here. And he quit. He quit? Yeah. So then, LeBron James, who copied my idea on the barbershop, because <laughs> I did it in 2000. In fact, find that footage, because I'm going to re-air that, because I did anger for seven straight nights, two weeks in a row, one for women and one for men. And so I'm going to bring the barbershop back, too. And then people are going to say I'm copying them. But when LeBron was in the barbershop, he said something. Yeah, 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 uh, 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 can, can, can we just, can we, I got about three videos. Can I play these videos, please? Play that video, please. This is LeBron in Duran's barbershop. Recently, Magic stepped down. What was that? How did you find that? Yeah, what was that process? I'm not him. <laughs> 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 Down through him. Yeah, can lock him. Yeah, and I follow him from Randy. <laughs> Between my stretching session, my right hand comes to me and say, Matt, Matt just stepped down. I'm like, what do you mean, like from out of his car? <laughs> <laughs> he like, he like, I'm like, no. Nah. I said, you know, he like, Matt just stepped down. I'm like, man, my face, you. He like, go check your phone. I go check my phone. He walks, he he walks in. Randy walks in with me. I go check my phone. I look at it. He's on the floor, he's on the floor, right, in the, in, the, in the locker room, and he looks up at me almost at the same time that I'm checking my phone. He like, yo, you see? 
Everybody starts coming to the locker room. And no one had no idea. We was like, like right now? Like it was literally 70 minutes on the clock before, you know, I'm not playing, but my team is still playing. They're getting ready for a game. And you kind of decided to do that right here, right now. Like I feel like there's a time and place for things. And I believe that you knew you were going to make that decision. So why would you do it here? And why would you do it now? And personally for me, I came here to be a part of the Lakers organization, having a conversation with Magic and, and, and really kind of breaking it down and saying how we was going to make this showtime again. And I wanted to be a part of that process. And he kind of explained to me, like, you know, year one is going to be tough. And year one is going to be tough. We're a young crew, you know, but we're going to do what we got to do this year. We're going to see how well we can perform this year. And obviously injuries kind of this year, but we all knew that it was going to be kind of tough. But I was okay with the process, which at year 16, you ain't really supposed to be worried about the process, especially for me, because I'm in championship mind mode all the time. So it was just weird for him to just be like, I'm out of here. And not even have no, like, hey, Brian, kiss. I'm out of here. Like, at least I, I would have been, like, okay with that. Like, hey, Brian, this magic, kiss my gone. It, it's not, it, it wasn't even that. What's weird is he told me beforehand. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I was like, just tell me. He him, said, don't tell anybody. Right. Don't tell anybody. Yeah. 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 Make it a surprise. Right. <laughs> yeah, but it was different for me. Like, like when I was, I was like, Crazy. <laughs> and I took a minute and I was like, yo, cool, we're going tonight. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, 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 Let's like, stop it right there. This is the norm of our world. Ain't nobody saying nothing to nobody, but everybody talking about everybody. And the gossip in Hebrew is nothing but the tale bearer of Satan to be trapped by the deception. So here he is saying, this man who I left at my front door doesn't have the gumption, the testicular fortitude to call me up and say, this is what's happening. And we done set forth and committed on a mission. Then I've been working on, I have this thing called hashtag Brother Hard Knocks. I'm almost finished, my friends, but I got two more videos I need you to bear with me. I quit on black men and quit on press men at hashtag Brother Hard Knocks because I said I'm tired because things are not working. And God says, no, Duran, you're trying to use what I do as a methodology. He says, you just need to go into the spirit. And he says, I already got them because they're trapped by a powerful delusion called the lie you have to go back and start relying on my spirit read this go read it with me go trauma begets trauma and will continue to crossing generations and families he committed the same sins as his father stunning like my daddy listen stunning like my daddy is using, displaying unusual strength and skill and daring. He came out stunting like my daddy, stunting like my daddy. Something done to attract attention or publicity. Stunting, to form a stunt. And so many of us have learned to stunt like our parents and pretend and get attention, but not carry out the action of execution. So he, he too, she too committed the sins of her mother and her father. So I asked Joma, I said, I said, tell me this, man. You think Kyrie will play with LeBron? And they got a beef, don't they? He said, no, they ain't got no beef. I said, well, it, it said they had a beef. He said, that's the media. So I asked a couple more people in the barbershop because that's where you get your information. <laughs> Play that video. Kyrie. They're on the championship, I tasted it, but I can't expect that they're going to get it right away either. So it was a big deal for me because I had to uh, call Brian, you know, and tell him, like, 
you know, I apologize for being that young player that wanted to everything at his, you know, at his fingertips, and I wanted everything to uh, be at, you know, my threshold. I wanted to be the guy that led us to change. I wanted to be the leader. I wanted to be all that, and you know, the responsibility of being the best player in the world and leading a team is something that's not been for many people. And Brown was one of those guys that came to Cleveland and tried to really show us, show us what it's like to win a championship, and it was hard for him. And uh, sometimes getting the most out of the group. It's not the easiest, the easiest thing in the world, and um, like I said, only few are, are meant for it or chosen for it. And you know, I feel like the best person to call was him because you know he's been in this situation. You know, he's, he's been there with me, where I've been the young guy, of, you know, being a 22 year old kid, you know, wanting everything, wanting everything right now. You know, coming off an of All Star year starting, and then you know this, this heck of a presence coming back, and now I got to adjust my game to this guy. And um, you know, you take it personal, but at the end of the day, he just wants what's best, and he has a legacy he wants to leave, and he has a window he wants to capture. So I think what that brought me back to was like, all right, how do I get the best out of this group of the success they had last year, and then helping them. He followed the advice of Kobe, right? Yeah. What was the advice that Kobe Bryant had given him? Shoot the ball. What? Shoot the ball. Get yours. Because that's what Kobe. Kobe, uh, his mentality is he's going to get it his way which is shoot, shoot, shoot. Um, I mean, Kobe averaged 29 shots a game his entire career, uh, and that's a lot. So uh, Kyrie, growing up, one of his biggest idols was Kobe, and Kobe said, hey, if you're going to go out, go out. Cause go. Do you think that was good information? It's good information in the time, but at the end of the day, when you're playing with greatness like LeBron, you got to line up, and you can't shoot like that you know, playing with LeBron. So it's not good information we're playing with. Okay. All I want y'all to hear is that that man humbled himself and he understood, wait a minute, I ain't mature enough to carry this. I am with this and I'll just ask you a couple of questions. I wrote this in 2016. Brothers and sisters, I'm honored to have the privilege to be your shepherd. I'm even more honored to be leading you onto the field of battle of life, the cosmos. But there's another honor to be bestowed upon all of you who are listening to me now. And that is in the answer that comes from that question. Who am I? I am a soldier. That's right, you need to remember that all through this week, I will conquer what has not been conquered. I will defeat, not be, defeat will not be in my creed. If God be for me, who can be against me? I will believe what others have doubted. I will always and ever to pull my esteem, honor, and respect out of my fellow brothers and sisters of the struggle. I have trained my mind, my emotions, and my body to follow the spirit of truth. Who am I? I am a soldier. I acknowledge the fact that there are forces in heavenly places that do not expect me nor my family and friends to win. But all I do is win. And even when I've lost, I won because all things work together for the good of those who serve and serve Christ who strengthens me. Never again will I surrender my purpose to the distractions of this world. Never again will I be a sellout to my flesh. Weakness will not be in my heart. The fear of the unknown will not dominate me. I will look to my brothers and sisters who are a part of me as one man. I will pick them up when they fall. I will draw strength from them all. For we are one man, one body with many members all worshiping and serving together for one purpose. And that purpose is being love and sharing. Love with a dying world. Who am I? I am a soldier. I will gladly go out into the field of battle this week for the spirit of truth is with me and it is with you. I will not allow anything to stop my flow in God this week. I will rip the heart out of the enemy of darkness and with my own business to my father's business. I will leave him bleeding on the ground because he cannot stop me. Get thee behind me because I have the authority because greater is he that is in me that he is in the world. Who am I? I am. A soldier. Be glad. Once you get to where you are, 
that you remember that you have a vision to pursue and that you don't let that get past you. The only thing I will add to what Deron said that it has to be that a soldier must always know, and that is that the enemy blends into your environment. You must always be mindful. If you saw the film with the tiger or the leopard or whatever it was, what did you notice? That the reason why you couldn't see it right away because that enemy blended into the environment. That's why Luke 14, 26 will say this to you. If you don't hate your mother and your father, your own self, your children, if you don't hate that, then you can't continue to follow me. Because your enemy oftentimes blends right into your environment. It's your enemy, it's your environment, it's those people that you love that get you on Facebook and Instagram. You didn't start doing that for strangers. It starts with this. I want to make sure I can keep in contact with my distant family. That's where it starts. I want to make sure because we don't get to see each other. That's where it starts. And before you know it, you don't see that along with that good idea is the enemy that has now blended so well into your environment that you're no longer paying attention. A soldier must never forget. Never. That's why a soldier must be ready for not just uh, combat, but conflict. And teach yourself how to deal with conflict with at least as much energy expenditure as you can possibly do. Because the goal of the enemy has been from Daniel to Revelation, it has been this, to wear the saints out. I'll wear you out with you arguing with your kids. I wear you out, have you so worried about what's going on with your kid who you can't control. That you forget that I have a purpose for your life. Never forget that your enemy will never be obvious. Not when you're a soldier. Not when you're a skilled soldier. Do you understand me? That means you must be discerning, aware, and alert. You know what that means? You got to take some of that, that goofy stuff and put it, put it down. You're going to stop all that giving your best mind and your best self and your best creativity to how well your selfie looks when you post it. Every time you do that and you take the time and you engage your mind, you are engaging your God image into the situation. You are inserting that. That's what... That's, that's what who are you but the child of the creator? That means your creativity has power. And it moves people. You can choose to move people in the flesh. Or you can choose to use your creative power to move people to, towards a spirit, an enduring spirit. That is more than a one-time selfie. You must never forget. That the enemy will never make itself obvious. That's why you got to take your thoughts captive. If you're looking for your enemy to come and cuss you out, that's a, that's a decoy. Jesus, Judas gave a kiss. Not a cuss. A kiss. Watch those kisses, my dear. You'll be on somebody else's page. No slick when you hear it. How do I know that, Angie? Because I know what love is. And all I have to ask anybody when they doing some way, did that come from love or fear? And if you just answer that, you'll know what frequency you on. I was, I was trying to keep them from doing this right here. Okay, you're in prevention? Okay. You're trying to prevent something? Because you are more in fear than in love. Love can embrace all things. Love knows when to say, what to say no to and what to say yes to. But it'll always be those things that you're going to pay the least amount of attention to. That's why God always has to be first in your life. So with that said, you're going to win this thing. You got to play this right. See, in, 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 in laughter, the heart aches even in laughter. So stop believing all that stuff you see. Bow your head, take a minute, and pray. God, what is this?
Evaluate the energy. Mm, where's this energy? Is this destructive? How do you know love? How do you know love? How do I know love? Because love doesn't destroy. Now, love hurts feelings, but love is not bent on destruction. God so loved the world, he gave his only son. And he said that son did not come to condemn and destroy. That's how you're going to know. Are you trying to hurt somebody? How do I know to do love? Deron said it's a decision. How do I know what to do? I refuse to. Anytime I do anything to get you back, I am not in love. I don't care what it is. The wrong calls my name, and I know I heard him, but I don't feel like answering. <laughs> and I ignore him. I tell myself, chill, you know, listen, right now you're just loving yourself. So I'm in that kind of love. But I know good and well I heard him. So when he said, Jill, do you hear me? Well, I got to choose whether I'm going to be in love or I'm going to hit that lie. So guess what I do? I don't answer that either. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, a couple of times I fake sleep. But what am I saying to you? We got to win this one. The world, the world, the world is running real fast. It's running real fast in the way of destruction, in the way of distraction and destruction. It's running real fast. The spirit can go before you and you don't have to do all that. But what you do have to do is be very honest and truthful. And so the one thing I'll leave with you, with all that wonderful stuff that Ron left, stop acting like that your enemy, your real enemy, is the one that you know don't like you. No. She's waiting for an opportunity, always. And when people trial come, that's when you see what's really on the inside. As soon as you get hit, you'll see what's inside. And if you're honest about what's inside of you and you say that it belongs to you, I'm okay with that. I, I don't mind growing with you. I just mind you blaming me for your situation. I don't mind growing with you. I don't mind you having a situation that I wish you would have conducted better. But what I won't accept is the voice of the accuser pinning labels and names and conversations on me. I will not accept that. Not as a child of God. I absolutely will not. That's how I love me. Sometimes when I'm doing will, it ain't against you. It's just for me. And we both can't have our way. Not today. Are you ready to live like that? Because that's real life in the spirit. Because somebody ain't going to like you saying yes to yourself when, and be, by saying no to them. Are you ready to live with that soldier? I, I promise you, you can't do that in high, high heel shoes. You're going to need some combat boots. Because you're going to have to walk through some manure, some stuff, some fields to get where you're going. But this takes effort. But before you take effort, it takes commitment. And with commitment, there has to be a pledge and a vow. What do you vow today to do? What, is the, what goal will you set for yourself to grow? How, what will you say you're going to do? The one thing you're going to do to do better in the situation that keeps coming up in front of you. As I had to tell myself about an upstairs room that I had put a whole bunch of stuff in. You know, Jill, that room's not going to clean itself. I kept looking at it like it was going to change. <laughs> it's not going to change, Jill, until you do something about it. You want change? Then offer yourself as a living sacrifice. Stop resisting God's change in your life that's going to make you come face to face with your ego. And let you know that, that, that God is number one. Commit that today. And John Maxwell would say, would say it this way. We have a whole bunch of decisions. We, we, don't have, we don't make a whole bunch of decisions. We just have to maintain the ones that we made. What decision did you make that you're not maintaining? Why am I saying this to you? Because I, I, I want to celebrate with you. I want to celebrate your growth with you. I want to celebrate your success with you. But I won't celebrate another conversation from five years back, the same conversation. Mm-mm. When you, when, let's, 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 let's deal with a new problem now. 
You in this room, you heard all this wonderful stuff. You saw those good videos. This, was, this service was intense with truth and spirit. Now, you respond to God. If anybody would like some prayer to say, God, here I am, and I'm standing in front of witnesses. I ain't asking you to come down the aisle for your salvation. I'm saying for your accountability. Stand to your feet and say, I want all y'all to see that I'm saying I'm going to do better. If that's you, stand on your feet. I just want everybody to know, when you see me, my feet will be moving in the direction of doing better. That ain't hard. Lord, I'm going to do better. Well, how did he start this off? Because you ain't doing your best. So how are you going to get to your best if you're not even going to make a, 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 a commitment to do better? I thank God for all of your honesty here in, in Maryland and ATL as well as Periscope and Facebook. I thank God for your honesty. We got some work to do. Darkness, darkness is scrambling our kids' brains. And that's only going to make the world a more difficult place to live in. Amen? Will, can you come pray for them, please? And close out. Thank you. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray right now that you reveal to us the decisions that we have yet to commit to. God, we ask you right now that you reveal and make plain to us right now the decisions that we just keep repeating over and over and over again, but we keep saying out of our mouths that we want out. And this time, God, we ask that when you reveal it to us, God, we give you our word today, God, that we're going to turn it over and we're going to make a different decision. That we're going to go in a different direction. We're going to go in the direction this time, God, that you point to. And so, God, when we give it to you this time, God, I'm asking you right now to point in a direction. And, Father God, we give you our word according to your spirit and to truth, God, that we're going to follow that direction. Help us, God, not to be friends with the chaos that surrounds us. Help us not to be friends with the chaos that lives in us, God, but help us to transcend what's in us so that we can control what's going on around us. Father God, we ask you right now, God, help us to stop lying to ourselves. Help us to stop lying to ourselves that we can not only tell ourselves the truth, that when we speak, God, we, other people can hear truth from our mouths too. But help us to stop lying to us first, God. Because we know that, God, if we can stop lying to us, we'll stop lying to you. We do want to do better, God. We do want to be better. Today, God, the real prayer is help us mean it. Help us to mean it so that we can step forward in truth, integrity, character, and honesty. So that we can step forward in the character of who you are by the power of your Holy Spirit. If you want to be better, say, I want to be better. If you want to be more honest, say, I want to be honest. Say, I want truth. I want high character. Lord, I want you. God, help us to receive your ways. Help us to become more friendly with your word and your spirit than we are with this world. Help us, Father God, to get off the Twitter verse, the Instagram verse, God, the universe's page, God, and get on your page. Help us, God, to be friends of you. Help us to overcome. If you believe it right now, that you believe that you are delivered and you're going to make this different decision starting in this moment, somebody praise God like you mean it.